Hey friends, hello, happy Thursday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm Lisa Hetrick. All right. Hello, hello. I have a really fun card tutorial to share today, but we're going to have a little bit more of a watercolor lesson, kind of like we've been doing a lot on this channel. Um, but yeah, super fun. I'll get in, I'll dive into it. I see people popping in. Cherie, hi Pamela, Joanne, Catherine, Linda, hi from Wisconsin. Hi, Joanne. A lot of people are popping in. It was weird because when I went live, something there was some kind of error with the stream. I was like, uh oh, let's we'll see what happens. But um, it all worked out. So, yeah, super, super fun. Hi, Catherine from sunny Arizona. Really fun. I'm so glad everybody could pop in today. Okay, there's a lot going on today. Um, also, Gina K is going live. Uh, I think at one o'clock, so it's one o'clock Eastern, noon Central, and she's got a big announcement, so you're going to want to catch that, and most of you, I know, I see everybody in here, a lot of you are in the Gina K group, so there's some big announcements she's sharing today, and I don't even know what it is, so it's kind of exciting, I can't wait to pop over and see. Okay, hello everyone, again, I'm Lisa Hetrick, welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about a holiday and winter themed color palette, pinks and icy blues. I'm going to tell you the backstory of why I decided to do this today. And the watercolor lesson today is going to be a little bit of a nerd out on metallics, metallic watercolors and how to get that shimmer and shine. And um, a little bit about pastels, pastel watercolors. So we're going to do, I've got this idea in my head. I haven't executed it. So We'll kind of see what happens. So, hello. A lot of Kathy's in here today. So, hello. A lot of Kathy's. Um, oh, Kathy McDermott just says, what is it? I don't know what it is. I re I don't have an, any idea what it is. I saw all of the same hints that everyone else saw. So, super, super fun. I see a lot of people popping in. Oh, very cool. Okay. We're going to dive right into it. We're going to get this card completed within the hour. And I'm just going to nerd out a little bit and talk about this color palette and the metallics. And we're going to kind of dive into it. And I have a little tip and trick I want to share. So let's go ahead to the overhead cam and head down. All right, friends, if you have a question along the way, pop question in the chat so that I see it. And um, I will answer it along the way and kind of give you this little bit of a backstory about today. But here is the inspiration for today's project. This is a card that I did for the release with Mary Everything. And you can see it's got that gold embossing. And I love that gold with pinks and golds with blues. So it prompted me to talk a little bit today about a color palette for holiday and winter. Now, all of the supplies that I'm using today are listed down below in the description. If you're on Facebook, they're listed down below there. And on YouTube, they're listed as well. But I am using these two sets today. My newest set with Gina K called Mary Everything. And I'm using festive phrases. This set is so fun. It's These phrases are huge. They're big. They're big honking phrases, and what I really, really love about them is how wonky they look. And I know I recognize everybody's name here today, and I know that you know how much I love wonky things. So, um, the pinks and the blues. Yes, pinks and the blues. Okay, so that's what we're using today. Those are the stamps. We are going to do a little bit of a background um, a little bit more of the pattern backgrounds and we've done that like in the last two videos tutorials we're gonna do them again now the other quick supplies that I have I have some ocean mist cardstock and innocent pink cardstock cut to an A2 size card this is Gina K cardstock I have a piece of layering white cardstock cut with that master layout style this ends up being like three 3.75 by 5 I think um, just to get that pattern, that background. I already did a pre-stamped. I pre-stamped that big honking tree from Mary Everything. And I used, I think this is white, some white embossing powder. Because 
and this big honking die. I love this die in the set. It cuts out the tree and it cuts out all those edges around it. We're going to be doing some watercoloring and metallics on this piece. This is going to be our little showcase piece for the card. Okay. And I'm using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. <laughs> Angie says, I love all the big honking things. Honking wonky things. Me too. I love all the big honking wonky things. This is the watercolor paper that I'm using, Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. Um, that's listed below. And uh, that's my favorite for paper crafting. I use it all the time. Um, so many of you aren't new here. You know I talk about it a lot. Now, I want to get into... Before we get started with making our card, I want to nerd out a little bit. We're going to get into this color palette discussion and well, I have some jimmies too. We'll talk about the jimmies later. This color palette discussion and a little bit of a chat about <laughs> uh, trends. I, I don't really follow trends a lot, but here I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. Because I am a designer and illustrator, I do have to look at trends, and I do kind of have to pay attention to them a little bit. So um, my little backstory is uh, some, I went to, I recently went to a store called At Home. It's like a big home superstore. And I just took a, I just drove up by myself and I wanted, I was looking for something. But anyway, I went in there because, and I was look, I kind of got overwhelmed by the amount of Christmas things that were in that store. So um, let me just kind of pop my face up here. I got completely um, overwhelmed by the amount of Christmas things in that store. But instead of being overwhelmed, I decided to just kind of take a peek at the color palettes for the holiday season and see what was like coming out and kind of what was inspired, what was inspiring and what was kind of inspiring me instead of really just kind of lamenting at the fact that all of this holiday stuff, all this Christmas stuff was already out, um, you know, in September, I decided, Hey, let me just take a look at these color palettes and see like what can inspire me for some other projects. And what I was seeing a lot of were pink, ice blue, and gold. And it kind of prompted me to go back and take a look at some of those trend reports that I was looking at for design work at the beginning of this year. And those three colors were colors that were predicted to be pretty popular for the holiday season. And I think that they're always popular, but it, they were everywhere everywhere. So I was like, okay, how much fun can we have in translating that over into some card making and talking a little bit about um, metallics and talking about metallic watercolors. Okay. So that's, that's what prompted today. And that was my, my long winded little nerd out backstory. All right. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about the two colors. So innocent pink and Ocean Mist are the two Gina K colors that really um, have that icy blue and really like soft pink kind of look and feel. So I've done them right here so you can kind of see those. Okay. Angie said interesting trend for this year. I thought so too. So um, I thought, yeah, it was kind of funny because it didn't, I had created this card because I love pink and I like the gold together. Normally I gravitate a lot towards silver and I don't gravitate towards gold. So I was like, hmm, let's see what else we can do. So Innocent Pink and Ocean Mist are the colors that I'm working with today. And then I've got these pastel watercolors and I've got metallics. So I wanna talk a little bit about both and have a little bit of a nerd out. Now, these pastel colors are from Holbein. I've got them listed down below. They came in a, um, they came in tubes and you know, there's lots of different pastel watercolors that are out there. I actually listed a few in the description, but I'm going to give you a little tip and trick about these pastels. So what I really like about pastel watercolors is that they um, they are water soluble, okay? So they're not like gouache. Gouache is more of an opaque 
water soluble watercolor but pa these pastels have a little bit of opacity to them but they can be watered down so you can see I'm adding water to them and I can water them down and I can get even lighter values of that color so here's my original hue and I can get lighter values of that color by adding water to it and I love this pink and this blue they're like the epitome of this palette that I'm going for um, Andy just shared that she gravitates, gravitates towards silver too I do too I do too so like gold is like something okay now if you are if you have if you just have one watercolor set and it's not pastel or you have a few pastels, the only difference between these watercolors and other watercolors that you might have in your set is that these have more white in them. So we get a little bit more of that opacity. They have more white in them. And I've talked about this before. You can take, if you have a watercolor set, you can take your bleed proof white, or like your Copic white or just even a, a tube of white gouache and you can add it to your watercolors and you can achieve that pastel look but super fun and super easy so you don't have to like invest in having a watercolor set and having a pastel set I just really like this set uh, so I got it um, which kind of made it kind of fun for us to play with today now, another way, I want to just dive in and do a little bit of an experiment. So these are pastel watercolors. You could take, this is my Gina K Innocent Pink. I'm just going to put that down. We're going to do a little, little experiment. This might be a little dry. Is that my Innocent Pink? Oh, that's my Dusty Rose. I knew that looked off. All right, we don't want that one. I think I got the wrong lid on there. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this innocent pink. Look, my felt pad is already... I need to glue that back down. I'm going to take some of this innocent pink right here and put that down. That felt pad has been... It got water up underneath it. I'm going to take a little bit of that innocent pink and what I'm doing right now is just trying to help you achieve one of these pastel pinks. So here, taking a little bit of that innocent pink and mixed it with that opaque white. And it's getting like that pink look to it, but I really, I need some more. So you're going to need, like if you have the reinker, I should have grabbed the reinker for Dusty, for, um, innocent pink we could have used that that's all right let's just try to get a little more mixed in here to try to get that pink going you know what I'm gonna grab I am gonna grab that reinker no nope, let's not let's just work with what we got here okay just get some of that ink down got some of my innocent pink There we go. Just moving that white over into that innocent pink. So you could take your white and mix that in. This is that bleed proof white we, we used that last week. And you can get that pink. Oh, this is very subtle. So I could add a little bit more to it. Oh my gosh, look at that. And I can get that pink that I want to get. Digging that. Let's try it again. So you can do it with the ocean mist. So this is just some alternative ways. If you don't have the pastel watercolors, you can do it with your inks. And you can get that pastel look. Okay, let's just grab a little bit. I don't want to overwhelm it. Oh, that color's juicy. So basically what we're, what we're creating here is just a pastel watercolor oh look at those two these are these are a little more concentrated because they were designed that way 
But if we're doing like a little cheat, a little hack, right? And we're adding a little bit of the bleed proof white into the inks, you can get that pastel look. Love that. Drop in the comments if you've ever tried this or is this something new to you? I'm always looking for ways. Like last week I talked about like different ways you could stretch the things that you have to create different things. I call them like little experiments. So we're constantly experimenting to create something new. Loving that. Okay, metallics. Let's dive in and have a little chat, chit chat about metallics. Now, I just narrowed down the metallics I was going to show everybody today because I have a lot. I listed some metallics down below in the description from two really, really affordable um, brands. But I have like gold and silver. You don't need, here's my opinion on metallics. Gold and silver are the ones we tend to work with or the bronzes. Um, I have different silvers and this is like a, a creamy silver. Now, getting colors in your metallics, I very rarely use these. I'm always gravitating, gravitating towards the gold and the silver. So you can add the metallics and based on, depending upon the brand you're working with, you're going to get different color payout. So you can see that the color payout of the gold here is really, really intense. I love that. I think this one, this particular gold is a Schmincke gold. There's, um, I have an Arteza brand gold that's really, really nice. Um, and the Paul Rubens that I listed down below, they're really, really intense too. Um, and then some of these other big ones I have were like handmade. But look at all that. Like you can see how much is getting on the brush. So the more you have on the brush, the more intense the color. And I love it. Now metallic watercolors, like when, if you're just getting started with them, like I said, just make, just get a few. You don't need to like, there's lots of sets that have 24. Um, I've seen even sets that have 48 metallics. You're, you're never really going to use them because you're always going to end up coming back to silver, gold, maybe white. The colors I very rarely use. And I'll just kind of show you this. The colors tend to have a little bit of like um, an interference color in them. So like you can see more of a holographic look. This purple is very, very nice, but I very rarely use it. Because I have a tendency to just take my golds or my silver and mix them in with your inks or mix them in with your paint to get a new effect. So loving that. Let me show you. Um, here we go. Let's just grab another piece. If you have questions about metallics, let me know. Now, in our paper crafting industry, we have lots of different ways to create shimmer and shine in your project. There's all different kinds of products to do that. Our embossing powders, um, all the different kinds of like tube, the Nouveau drops, all the different kinds of tube things that you can use to create those looks. I just like using these watercolors because it's a quick way to drop some shine into your project. And this is literally going to last my lifetime. Probably going to pass it down. Pass it down to a grandchild or something someday. Okay, I've taken a little bit of this. What I love doing with the watercolors and the metallics is mixing them up. So I'm going to take a little bit of this gold and kind of just drop it right in with the pink. And just kind of let it do its thing. Just dropping it in so I'm getting a little bit of a gold shimmer layered in with that pink. Let's see if I can turn it so you can see. And we're going to get a little bit of that. It kind of turns it a little bit peachy. Just kind of cute. 
All right, I'm going to come in with that um, icy blue. And I'm going to add some silver. Just kind of drop some silver in there and see what we get. Kind of gives us a little bit of a silvery shine. Add a little bit more. When it dries, we're going to get really super silvery. So here are some golds, like here's some golds and silvers that I did before we went live. And take a look at that shimmer. So it can be very, very subtle. The reason why I like, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the watercolors is because it can be very, very subtle versus, um, you know, adding some Nouveau drops or, um, what were they called? Stickles, things like that, where you can add, that's more like a glue that suspends the, the um, glitter inside of it. So sometimes that can create a little bit more height or it creates a little bit more texture, which is nice too. But I like adding these little gold metallic watercolors because it's just a little bit of shine for your project. All right, here's another one I wanna bring in. Now this one, I didn't even list this below, but this is what I would call an additive. And you can find these in lots of different brands. So this is called Aqua Shine, and this is Schmincke. So this is an additive. So you can add this to your watercolor. I'm just gonna get a little bit on my brush so you can see, and just kind of paint that out. Now you can paint this out alone, and I really do like to use this just alone by itself because it's got this interference like glitter in, in it, shine to it, that just kind of adds that extra little bit of sparkle. You know, you can also use embossing powders that have those glitter and shimmers in them. And you can do like the embossing technique and you'll have that shimmer and shine in it. I'm embossing challenged. So I have, a, you know, some issues getting a successful emboss look. I'm going to grab a little bit of this ice blue. And I think for today's card, we're going to play a little bit with some embossing resist. We're going to do ice blue, and I think we're going to just pull in some of these silvers. So I'm just going to drop that in. Or golds. I don't know. Tell me what you think we should do. I feel like ice blue should go with silver. But I really, and I really like the pinks and the golds. So maybe we'll do, you can see that shimmer. I mixed it in with that watercolor. So that's what's really nice about these watercolors or these additive products. Like that, you can see it's liquid already. And it's high, high shimmer. It's going to, last, that little bottle is going to last forever. And what I really like about it is that when it dries, same thing with our metallic uh, watercolors, you can run your finger over it. You're not going to get, like the glitter doesn't, like the shine doesn't come off. The mica powder that's in it doesn't come off, which is really nice. All right, Kathy's saying we should go pink and gold. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> As I was doing this, I initially was thinking we would do like, ice blue and some silver but I'm thinking let's do a pink and gold okay all right if we have any questions this is just a really quick little lesson but here's our basic color palette for holiday and winter we'll do pink and gold this week and maybe oh we got blue and silver blue shimmer everybody's saying a bunch of different things I don't know let's dive in all right let's dive in see what see what we're feeling all right, I'm going to move some of these pieces out. Kind of did our little quickie lesson. And I'm going to bring in, I actually need a piece of watercolor paper behind this. So let's go ahead in and grab a piece of paper. Grab a piece of watercolor paper. So here is my 
<laughs> blue and silver. Everybody's saying blue and silver. All right, let's do the blue and silver because we have, and then we're going to do a blue background here. So here's our ocean mist cardstock. Here's our um, white layering white cardstock. Then I'm going to do a pattern back here. We know we have our we have our gold and pink example right here. Now, I've taken the big honking tree from Mary Everything. Let's just go ahead and grab that back out so you can see it. And I stamped this with I stamped this down and I embossed it in white. Now what I want to do is go in here and do a wet and a wet technique. And I want to drop in some of that ice blue and some silver and maybe some gold. Maybe we'll do both. I don't know. Some silver and gold and just kind of do a little bit of a resist and see what we get. Hello, Judith. And Cheryl popped in. Lots of people popping in. We've got a lot of people here today. Okay, friends. I'm going to take a little bit of this icy... Oh, Wait a minute. Before we do that, I want to do this wet into wet. So my brush is wet, my paper is dry. I need to get my paper wet. Do, do, do. Get the watercolor paper nice and wet and juicy. And the water is going is resisting from the white emboss powder. All right then. We've got a little motorcycle going down the road. Question. Robin has a question. Can you use a metallic ink pad as a watercolor like you use the Gina ink, Gina K ink? That's a good question. Let me pop that up real quick. Robin shared, can you use a metallic ink pad as a watercolor like you used with the Gina K ink? So Robin, the answer to that question is, um, here, I'm going to pop my face in. So the difference would be, that watercolor, that metallic ink pad is probably pigment, a pigment pad. So experiment with it. So the pigment pads have a little bit more, have other um, properties in them that make them a little bit less water soluble. So I would just take a little bit, put it down on your mat, and then add some water to it and play with it. So... The Distress Oxide inks are very similar to pigments. Like they are a little bit thicker. So give it a try. I think it could work. You might not get that super duper shimmer and shine because that metallic is kind of suspended in the properties, the pigments. So, but give it a try. Um, I think, and let me know how it goes. That would be kind of cool. I'm going to see if I have a metallic pad and maybe give that a go as well. Um, okay. Yeah. I hope that answered your question. Okay. Deborah just asked, what ink did you stamp the tree with? Okay. I stamped the tree with um, Versamark. So I stamped the tree with Gina K Versamark. And then I used white embossing powder. So I'm going to take this icy blue and drop this in. And you can see it's like we've got a good resist going here because there's a lot of detail. Oh, this is looking good. This is looking good. Hi, Sandy. Oh, Angie just shared that she used a metallic pink, uh, metallic ink pad, like a watercolor since it's pigment. Yep. She said she just shared about the pigment because it's pigment as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to just give that a minute and let that just dry. So we've got a lot of resist happening. Now I'm going to come in with some silver. I think I'm going to add, just drop in some of this silver and just add a little bit of shimmer to it. I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I might even bring the heat tool over to let it dry. But while it's drying, I'm going to pull, I got a big bloop of silver there. Because what I want to do is kind of come back in and add some more color in some of the areas that I want things to be a little darker. But right now we've got all that shimmer. You know what? Another technique that you could use 
is those glimmer mists or those shimmery mists. You get these same kind of effects that we're doing now with watercolor and metallics. So those are fun ways to do it too. Hello from Denmark. Hi, kisser. Oh, hello. Good to see you. All right, I'm going to set this aside and make sure my area is dry. We're probably going to have to bring the heat tool over for this because I'm going to show you about how you can go back in and add some darker areas. I'm going to come in right now. Let's get this dried up. Yeesh. Come in with my piece of cardstock. Let's go ahead and put that there. We're going to come, we've got our ocean mist. We're going to start to do the background pattern for the card. And I think this time I've done patterns, showed everybody these two-step pattern um, with those two stamps. I think this time I'm going to come in with the star. And hopefully I put a block over here. Yeah, I did. We're going to come in with the star and we're going to create a little bit of a pattern. Hello, Suzanne. Susan Bollinger. Hello. She said she's finally made it. I'm going to come in and know that my pattern, I want it to kind of come down this way because we've got that big honking tree that's going to be right here. So let's just go in and play a little bit with this blue with this ocean mist. I'm going to start up top here. Uh, I love that. So we've got the line art and the solid happening. That's going to be a nice combination up against that tree. Now I'm going to nest. I'm going to use this as my anchor point and I'm going to come in and just start building my pattern. And I'm just going to build all the way down and across. Now I know that some of this is going to get covered and that's okay because let's make sure we get a little more ink on there because that's going to be okay. We're going to come down, we're going to come off the edge and I like how this is just kind of coming down. I didn't go off the edge up here but I'm going to come back and then just do a pattern off the edge. So you can see we've got that nice little pattern going right there. And I think I'm going to end up adding like a rogue piece out here. Knowing where that's going to land. I might not like this. I'm starting to have some a few little doubts, but we'll see what happens. Okay. You can kind of piece that over there just to get a good look. And I feel like I'm going to need one up here. So really simple card making today, really simple pattern making. I'm going to come in, just kind of lay that there and see how I feel about it. I kind of like it. Let's move this to the side. Now, this is still pretty wet and you can see how wet it is on the back. I'm going to just kind of dab off a little bit. Then I'm going to just heat, get a little heat on it. Should have brought my, um, I'm going to step to the side here a little bit and we're just going to dry this. Okay. So I kind of dried that up and we've got that ice blue. Oh, I really like it. I really like it. It's kind of really faded back. Now I want to come in and add a little bit more, but let's see if I can show you the shimmer. So you can see the shimmer. I love that. Super subtle. Now I'm going to come in and just kind of drop in. This is dry. Paper's wet. No, paper's dry. Brush is wet. 
This brush is very juicy. I want it to be less juicy. And then I'm just going to kind of come in to some of the areas where I want to add a little bit more. So I'm dropping color in and it's going to resist. See how I can get some darker areas, especially like around those edges, just to kind of make that tree pop a little bit more. Just kind of tap, tap, tapping it in. So the brushes, the paper's dry, the brush is wet. I've got like a 2% milk, almost a whole milk version of color going here. And see, I'm just tapping it in, wiping a little bit off. Just trying to bring back some of the darker areas so that it isn't so washed out. Kind of digging that, digging the way that looks. Okay. I'm really liking this. This is a very ethereal look. So if you find that you're embossing challenge like me and you have a hard time like getting a really crisp gold like this I did a pretty good job got a really crisp gold I love doing this emboss resist technique because the payout for your color is so good see I'm just dropping in some color and then in areas where I know there's whites for the emboss I'm just taking my clean brush and just wiping over it just kind of bringing back those whites. Oh, digging this. I am really digging the way this looks. Super simple. So we're retaining some of our dark colors right in here. And when it dries, holy smokes, it's going to be so pretty. But see, like right around here, there's a little bit. Let's see if I can come in a little tighter. It might be helpful. Okay. Right around here, there's a little bit of watercolor on the resist areas. I'm just wiping it off. And it's giving, then it's kind of revealing more to me. So I can take a little bit of watercolor and kind of add it into some of these areas to just create a little more pop. Normally I just throw down the watercolor and see what happens, but this is just kind of going back in and adding a little bit more precision to it. Just adding a little bit more to it, just to make things pop a little bit more. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this. I might regret this. Let's see. I'm going to take a little bit of this darker blue, this darker pastel blue that I have and really just get quite a bit of it on the tip. It's going to pop. Pop it in. I'm probably going to regret that I did that. But I want to just bring a little bit more attention. Just add some darks back in. Now if you're doing this, if you're watching this on the replay or if you're doing this technique, you can do this. Remember you can do this with your inks. You can use your inks as watercolor mediums. I'm liking that. I'm liking that we're pulling some of the colors back in. But I'm going to resist the urge to keep going because I want to let that dry a little bit. Love that. So I'm just kind of going back and forth. And you can see we've, we've brought back some of the detail in this bottom part of the tree. The top part of the tree we could use a little help. So see how I'm just going to gently wipe off what's here. And then I'm going to bring back some of those blues. Add a little blue here. Maybe add some in the center there. Add a little bit of detail back in to make some of that tree, that leafery in the tree, pop back out. Digging that. Let's add a little bit of this color right here. A little bit of that darker blue. Susan just said she got her set. Oh, I can't wait for you to try it. She just got her set. That's exciting. So when you try it, 
try this technique. Make sure you tag me so I can come in and take a peek. Just adding a little bit in there. I kind of want to add a little something right here. My eye is just drawn down here. I've got too much water on this brush. Too much water. Let's add a little bit right here. I even came over and added a little bit there. So we're really getting that ice blue palette for this holiday season. I'm kind of digging this. I love, this kind of has, have you ever heard or seen like cyanotypes where they take botanicals and they use this, this indigo blue chemical and then it ends up being like, um, like a, a sun print. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, Catherine just said, this is making me think it would be gorgeous in apple mint. Oh, yes. This would totally be gorgeous in an apple mint. Um, the Gina K apple mint. So you're going to get like that. You're going to get like with apple mint, you're going to get this color right here. That. Oh, this is showing up maybe a little bit too neonish, but let's water that down a little bit. You're going to get that beautiful green. This would be really great in that color. Okay. I'm liking this. I'm seeing some areas. I'm going to come in and just kind of tap a little bit with my Oh my gosh, so pretty. With my um, napkin. Now, I'm going to come back in here with some silver. Let's take a little bit of this silver and just kind of drop some in. We already kind of dropped some in in the beginning. But now we're just dropping in a little bit more. what would happen if I add a little bit of gold. Do a little gold and silver. Let's do a little test over here, a little experiment. So here's some of my, I think that will make it look like yuck. <laughs> I think it's not going to look that good. It's going to turn my blue a little bit green. So I'm going to stick with my silver. I really think the pink and the gold is the way to go. Pink and gold. Silver and ice blue are trendy colors for the holiday season. Cherie just shared she was thinking about apple mint too. Apple mint would be a great color. Great color. All right, this tree definitely has. Oh, some pretty silvers in here. We're going to let, you can see that big, look at that shimmer. Oh boy, when that dries, it's amazing. So when that silver dries, look at that. It's so subtle and shimmery. Love it. Love it. Okay, I'm going to move this to the side. Let me cover that up. Good choices, Dawn said. Good choices. Yeah, sometimes remember in our heads, experiments like golds and blues, I don't know. It's kind of pretty. But I think it'll end up looking like um, it'll start coming across as green, that gold that's in that blue. All right, let's go ahead and start a little bit of card assembly. And I've got some because I'm going to see if I feel like I need to add a little bit more to darken that up. I've got my Gina K glue. I also have some gems that we're going to add. Just add a little bit of glue to the back here. Oh my goodness. This is why I don't use tape runners because everything, I tend to overuse tape runners. We've talked about that before and you end up getting tape everywhere. All right, we've got this nice little panel here. And I like using the wet glue because it gives me a chance to like kind of move it around a little bit. Robin just shared, this tree reminds me of the felt wallpaper in my great aunt's house. This is that cool, like how, um, how stamps and how projects that we do can remind us of 
things in our family. I love that. Look at that shimmer that's starting to happen. Now laying this on top of here, I'm not, I wasn't sure I was really going to love it, but I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this off. So we've got like this tone on tone and we're, we've got this ocean mist, the ocean mist cardstock. We've got the ocean mist ink. I've used that pastel watercolor that matches the ocean mist. So we really have this like tone on tone kind of look, um, for this, for this card. Cheryl just asked what pastel paint set. So the pastel paint set that I'm using is from Holbein. These came in tubes and I just squirted them out into this little tiny um, palette for funsies. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of tape and put it on the back. Foam tape. Now, I also listed down below a couple other pastel versions. There is um, many different pastel watercolors. Arteza has a great brand. There's lots of different brands. If you're interested in them, you don't have to break the bank. And then, Cheryl, we also talked about, um, I'm not sure if you popped in a little bit later, and we also talked about how you can take your regular watercolor or even your inks, mix it up with your white, and you can create your own pastels. Okay, I'm going to drop this right in here, just kind of at the, in the middle. And just tap that down just to get that on there. This tree has definitely got, I'm going to come in and just kind of wipe off some of the areas on the embossed areas just to bring back those whites. So you could use white embossed powder or clear embossed powder to create that resist. Now I've got a few right in here. I just want to come in with the tip of my brush and just add a few darks right here. Clean off my brush, tap that out, tap, 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 tap it out got that I'm retaining that like icy blue look but kind of dropping in a little bit of indigo kind of just brings it all home right there now you could also do this whole technique with your blending brushes and you would be using your inks to create that look I did you know um, and then you can add your metallics on top. So just remember if you're not working with watercolor paper, I'm just adding some more details in here while I talk about nerdy stuff. If you're working, if you're not working with watercolor paper and you're adding some metallics onto like your layering white, just be mindful of how much water you add to your paper because you don't want to shred it. So you just need a little bit of water, just a tiny bit. So see how I'm just kind of, once it's on the card, I'm seeing some areas where I want to add just a little bit more to kind of make things pop, especially around the edges. See how my edges are a little bit too close to that pattern underneath. So I'm just adding a little bit of color. I can't wait to see you guys try this, see everybody try this. Add a little bit of color. Oh, I'm digging this. I'm digging it. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of my silver that's in here and just kind of drop in. The other thing about your silver watercolors is that they will, they'll just go where the water is. Oh, that's juicy. That's so juicy. I'm going to tap that out. See, I'm just dancing the brush across the whole surface. Just adding a little bit more water. And I just want right there. See, I just want to drop. And then just adding, these are just like little finishing touches, little taps. 
as my eyes just kind of going around and taking a look. I'm digging this. This is a little bit, this right here up here is a little too stark, but there we go. I just pulled away some color from its leafery friend next to it. Add a little bit of color here on this edge so that my die cut edge pops a little bit. Now I'm just getting like nerdy with the finishing techniques. Just adding a little bit here and there just to see how I'm adding some edges just to make this die cut pop but still retaining that look. I'm loving the way it looks. I'm going to resist the urge to do more. I'm going to stop. Stop right now, right? All right, I'm going to let this dry a little bit because look, it's super wet. I'm going to actually have to hit it. Let's just hit it really quick with the heat tool. Okay. Okay. Ooh, liking it. Okay. Now, I'm liking the way this looks. We've got that really nice pattern happening here. We've got a little bit of little bit of stars peeping out. Now, we're going to bring it all home with our sentiment and a little bit of jemmies. So, the sentiment I'm going to use is Season's Greetings. I've already pre-stamped it, and that set has a coordinating die set. And look at that. Okay, this, I love this set so much because it's so wonky. It's really well designed. And I just love that gold. So we are going to get the gold in here with our silver and our icy blue. Look at that. I got a little, boogered it up right there. I'm going to drop this in, I think, right across here. Right across the middle. And add that sentiment right there. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And I just did that on some Gina K Heavy White. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the back here. I'm just kind of focus this. This is kind of a big sentiment. It feels like it might be too heavy, but we're going to roll with it. Just kind of in this lower third. And I'm going to bring in some jemmies. Now these are like a little bit more of a 3D gem. And I'm just going to add a couple in. A little bit of glue. Maybe put one right here. Maybe put one right here. One, two, three. And maybe put one right there. Oh, that's big. That was a big glue. I am still trying to locate my Gina K picking tool. I literally have put it somewhere and I cannot find it. So I'm going to just do these with my fingers and that's fine because these have a little bit of an edge around them so I can get my fingers around them. Just kind of drop that in. Love that that glue will dry clear. There we go. I feel like we might need one right there. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, let's just pop one right here. Here's my glue. We'll take a little bigger one and pop it right there. All right, I'm liking it. All right, here's our card. Oh, wow. This is really fun. Okay, so here's our pink inspiration and here's our ice blue. And I got a little booger up right there, but I'm going to just go ahead and take that, um, take a little of that sand eraser and I'll sand that right off. But I am digging the way that looks. A lot of shimmer. Let's turn. You can see all the shimmer on the tree. We did bring a little gold into the mix. Not a lot of height. Totally digging that. And that sentiment, because it's so wild and wonky, um, just really kind of brings that card home because it's it's got we've got all that whimsy going on with the leafery and then adding those blues and those silvers just to kind of give you that ethereal look digging it okay friends 
we have like two minutes left. Wow, we did this in an hour. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's mini watercolor lesson about metallics. There's lots of different metallics on the market and lots of different things that you can use. I prefer to use the watercolors and I hope if you have some of the metallic watercolors in your stash, you'll be encouraged to get them out and give everything a try. I see everybody saying love this. So they're beautiful. Um, so pretty. I'm glad you got a lot out of today's tutorial. So ice blue. So consider this color palette for the holiday season. Ice blues, pinks, gold, and silver. But ice blue, pink, pale pink, and gold were the three trending colors for the holiday season. If you follow trends, I like the colors. I think I would use them all the time. I think that they're just really, really nice to work with. So the Gina K versions are Innocent Pink and Ocean Mist if you want to get that icy blue and that beautiful pink um, color. Okay. All right, friends, I am sending you into the weekend to craft your joy with a little bit of card making for the holidays. I will be back next week, but I think my tutorial is going to be more of a watercolor paint along. So we're going to paint um, a floral, I think. And there might be, we might make a card out of it. I don't know. But I am going to do a watercolor lesson, a little bit more of a deeper dive into some color mixing, I think, next week. If you're on my email list, um, you'll get that email for the live. If you're not on my email list, I would encourage you to do so. Also, um, you can join my free community if you're interested. All of that, in, all of that information is down below in the description. I'm never really 100% sure who sees what in social media. So I have my own free community where in my classroom at craftyourjoy.com where I share a lot of these tutorials and more things that I don't even share out in social media. Okay, I also, one more quick announcement. Um, people are sharing, I think I can do this technique. You can all do this technique. Everybody can do this technique. It was super fun. You can always watch the replay. One more quick announcement. I am closing my online gift shop and that is happening on October 27th. There is a 25% off sale running right now in that shop. You don't need a coupon code. You can just go to indigojadeartshop.com and load up your cart and your 25% off will automatically be deducted at checkout. So if you're interested, that is going to go through the 17th, that uh, sale, and then the shop is going to close on the 27th. Um, a little bit of a bittersweet. I'm having a little bit of the seven stages of grief as I'm closing this shop, but um, it's all good. It's all good, friends. Okay, friends, have a great weekend, and don't forget to check out Gina's announcement today. I think that's happening in an hour. What time is it? Yes, it's happening soon. Um, yes, yeah, she has something big she's going to announce, so super fun. And we do have a brand new Gina K release that's happening at the end of this month. Not next week, but the following Tuesday. So more to come on that, and I'm excited for that set. I'm really excited to share that set. Okay, friends, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye now.